Now, we're going to enter into a series uh, called Shining a Light in the Darkness. Uh, just excited. As you guys know me. I'm excited about every series, every message, every time I get up here because God's Word is so beautiful. It's so amazing. I, I, I love it. I, I love this picture. Uh, that's where we have uh, this sword. We believe this sword uh, represents the Word of God. Uh, that's what it's called. The, this, the, the Word of God is called a sword. And our ministry is, is about the Word. It's everything. Teaching answers for life. That's our vision. Everything is by and through the Word of God. And so when we did this, it was a moment where we were just, you know, the cross used to be up over here and just, just making that commitment that we're going to be those warriors. We're going to enter into that battle for those um, that are just lost and hurting and don't know the Lord yet and to hold on to one another. We gotta, it's tough because the enemy wants to knock us out. I mean, he, he, he wants to separate people and get them alone where he can pound on them, but we got to love everybody where they're at. You know, that's one of the reasons why when people walk in here, I think why they can feel love is because we're not critical. We're not a critical church. We love everybody. Nobody's perfect, right? If, I mean, if you're, if you're perfect, I don't, you probably won't be happy here because <laughs> none of us are. Uh, it doesn't give us a license to sin. We don't believe in that, but we deal with that. But we, we just, we love and we care and, and, and we're family and we, we hold on to one another. We're there for one another. Just like with Lucy, it's part of our family and they need some help. So we're going to help. Amen. You know, we want to do what we can because Matt does, they don't have the finances to go do this. You know, there are people too that we help. I mean, we, we made cookies and sold cookies and ate a whole bunch of cookies so I like that. So <laughs> that's a good way to raise money. But that was for a heat fund. We've already helped four families so far with the heat fund. Yeah, praise God. Come on. They were needing help. People needing help. And what, we just helped a young man. Uh, doesn't go to our church. Uh, he just fell on some hard times and uh, just uh, tough issues. He's a young guy. And he, he, they, shut, they shut it off. And, and my son knows him and said, hey, what about this guy? And I thought, yeah, okay. Let's I talk to the elders. And praise God. You know, so, I mean, there are people out there that we're helping uh, because we want them to know that God loves them, cares about them, and we want them to experience that love. So that, that's what family does. We help, we help everyone here stay strong so then we can help other people outside of the church as well. So that, that has to do with, with shining our light. Let's shine that, shine the, the goodness of God out there. 2022 will be a year of hope, decrees, and decisions. A lot of people are making a lot of choices this year because I believe that as we pray in our, our praise rallies and our prayer and we release the authority of God through his word, people are going to see clearly what's, what's going on and people are going to make a lot of choices about where they stand because we're in this spiritual battle of light against darkness. Things will be changing rapidly because the kingdom of darkness is being exposed by those shining the light, which is the truth. The only light we have in us is from Jesus Christ. We have no light on our own. We're probably pretty dull. But, but with his light, come on, with his light in us, the truth will prevail as God's authority is released greater than ever before. Now, God doesn't need us to release his authority. He can release it on his own, and he does. But he also chose us and gave us his authority being joint heirs with Christ, being children of God, being the ones that are supposed to go out there to be the warriors, you, you can't war without authority. And he's given us that authority. And that's part of my job as your pastor is to get you to see who you are in Christ and the authority that you operate in. So all these attacks of the enemy, you can stand strong against it and see who you are and release God's word which is his authority against what's coming against you so you can break the bondage and have freedom. Amen and amen. Okay, so our, our verse we want to start off with, Matthew 5, 14 through 15. You are the light of the world. That's you. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all those who are in the house. A lot of people said that that's America. They described that as America, as a nation, giving light to all the other nations because we, have, we were founded on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, our original theme verse from Matthew 5.16 that we started with, you remember now, we're, we're over 20 years old, 
And our original theme verse was Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. When we do these things um, to glorify God, to, to help somebody, to show God his love, people cry out to God. Hopefully, we're giving God the credit and not taking it ourselves. We always say, you know, give God glory because that's where we want the glory to go. Uh, not to us, but our, our light should shine the goodness, the love, the truth to let people know, hey, you know what? You're loved. No matter what, God loves you. He cares about you. He's going to see you through. Give him hope. Oh, and by the way, can, can we help you with that bill? I mean, yeah, I've been praying. I've been praying for God because I don't know how I was going to pay it. So thank you. You are the answer to somebody's prayer when you shine with the light of God. Somebody's praying to God that they need help. And you're the one that God chose to help them. If you're listening to the Holy Spirit. And we corporately do it and we corporately listen too. And that's why we give and have cookie drives and fundraisers. And man, I love it. We get to come out here on a Wednesday night and eat a bunch of food and raise money. Ha! I like it. Isn't that, I love Christianity. <laughs> eat, eat, eat and raise money. I don't know. That's, we always joke as pastors too. We always say, you preach and then you eat. So, you know, if you go preach at somebody's church, you're going to preach and then they're going to take you out to eat. Usually someplace pretty nice because it's just how it goes, you know. Unless if you're in another, in a third world country, you might just get some beans and rice, but it'll be good, right? Pray over it. <laughs> Not even sure what it is. Of course, I've, I've never gone to another country on a mission trip yet. One of these days, I'm sure. Okay, so Ephesians 5, 8, and 14 further describes this light. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light of the world. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. When, when the enemy, we, this, we expose the, the, the works of the enemy a couple ways. We have to expose it in our own heart, okay? Um, and and, and we, we want to see what's in there, and sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we need some help from some friends. Satan's number one, number one weapon is deceit. He wants to deceive you. And when you're deceived, you don't know it. That's the definition of being deceived. You're, you don't know that you're in darkness somehow. That's why we need each other to help expose that sometimes. You know, I, I, I need that. I mean, I'll, I'll get off with a bad attitude sometime and not even realize it. And somebody will come up to me and say, you know, like Charles, and say, hey, pastor, respectfully, but, you know, I don't know. So you're, not, you're just not coming off right, man. I think, what's, you know, what's going on? You know, lovingly. That's how we help each other, right? We don't jump on one another. Hey, you fool, you're being an idiot. Well, that doesn't help. Okay, then we lock up like, man, get away from me. But, but we need each other. We need each other because there'll be times you won't see things and that you'll be in a bondage and something needs to be exposed so you can see it and deal with it. You got to bring it out in the, in the light and you confess it and, and it comes out into the light. That's how we expose it. So for it's shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, by the light. Love. It's love. It's out of love that Charles came to me because he loved me and he loves all you guys. And he's like, okay, come on. And, and we do this for each other. For whatever makes for whatever makes manifest is light. So it's the light. It's the love. It's the light. It's the love of God that comes out to help us through these issues. So we not only do it um, individually, um, but we also do it, um, you know, um, corporately with, with what, uh, what, what's going on in the culture, what's happening, the lies of the enemy and, and this darkness and, 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 and how the enemy is trying to lie and, and, and move people in, in ways that aren't right, um, you know, from uh, uh, this, this uh, trying to, the LGBT uh, community trying to convince people that our, our, our kids can choose their gender, you know, when they're five years old. No! We got to expose that and say, no, that's not right. That's not the Bible. That's not truth. That's deception. So, you know, we have to speak up 
Or who's, who's, if, if we don't, who's pushing back against the darkness? We, we have to pray about it, then we have to push. Now, we love everybody. We love everyone, regardless of where they're at. But, but we still have to speak the truth because we love. And we don't want to see anybody get caught up in that bondage. Now, everything we do is based on the Word of God, our love for Him, and our love for one another. With that as our foundation, Jesus has given us different platforms to fight for his glory and the souls of men. So for the platforms that I just kind of want to look at that God has given us, how do they work together? How, how are these things structured uh, so we can use them? They're, they're part of our vision, part of what God gave us, and yet walk together where we, where we all feel comfortable with it, where we all have a peace. Now, we're, and, we, and we all are at different levels with different things. Um, you know, just to give you an example, now, today's the Super Bowl. And you guys know me. I, I've loved fo- I played football. I love football. I think sports are a, a phenomenal tool uh, that teach people when they grow up about discipline, about teamwork, about sacrifice, um, uh, uh, about that the dedication. All these things are, are excellent. Uh, but, you know, what happens sometimes, a good thing uh, can be uh, kidnapped by the enemy. And, and, and so I don't know. The Super Bowl now is, I mean, the halftime show is demonic has been for years, and, and now it's, I, I'm realizing, I kind of heard this before, but you know, I was discussing this with, you know, with my son and everything, and he, he even made me see some things more clear. Um, you know, it's, it's the largest day of the year for child sex trafficking, and it's all built around the Super Bowl. Um, so uh, there are just some things that are in it. Now, the game itself is great, and doggone it, Matthew Stafford's playing in it, you know? We got a lion playing in the Super Bowl. Ah. But for me, I'm not saying you. I'm saying for me, I, I just, I felt conviction. And when I told Karen a couple days ago, because I didn't want to get weak and rescind what I felt the Lord told me, because I felt the Lord say, you, do you really want to watch that? Knowing what's all around it? I thought, no. He goes, okay. He said, well, tell your wife so you don't get weak and watch it. <laughs> So I, t- I told Karen, I said, Karen, you got to help me out here. Oh, and she will, believe me. <laughs> She'll make sure we don't watch that game because she's not for it at all. I mean, she used to love football. Karen and I used to, I mean, we used to sit around Sundays and have a laugh. But anyway, but, and, and, but I'm not saying if, if you go to a Super Bowl party, go still. I'm not telling you not to go. Go have fun, celebrate, watch the game, and enjoy it. Um, if you watch the ha- halftime show, you better be praying before it comes out. I mean... You know, I'm sure you'll see all the demonic stuff in it, but so I'm not telling you you can't. This is how we work. Where are you at with the Lord? That's my conviction, not yours. You got to do what the Lord's telling you. And and it's okay. I mean, you know, I mean, you just might want to watch it in your own house and enjoy it. That's okay. Have fun. Hopefully cheer for Stafford. I don't know. I think the guy got beat up so bad in Detroit all these years, he deserves it. But, but again, that's, that's personal. And it's the same thing with all these platforms that we have. Today we're going to talk about um, uh, the uh, uh, I Am a Kingdom Builder uh, prayer booklet that we have. Um, and just kind of look at that and some of the prayers that's in there. And I encourage everybody to get that prayer booklet and pray that prayer booklet. Uh, it takes, you know, maybe five, six minutes a day, five days a week. Um, and then, but all it is is a jump start to your prayer, uh, your prayer life, because you still got to pray your own prayers. You still got to pray for your, you know, how, what God has shown you to pray and, and other things. So it's just, uh, it's in addition to what you pray. Now, if you pray it and you're just uncomfortable with it and you're like, I, I'm just uncomfortable with this and, and you don't have a peace with it, then, and you really feel the Lord's telling you not to pray it, then you know what, what I would tell you? Don't pray it. That's just how it works. I mean, I think we should be praying it, but for some reason, if you're just uncomfortable with it, I'm not going to say, oh, if you don't pray that, you're going to hell. No, it's not how it works. Or I'm not going to say, oh, if you don't pray that, you're not part of life song. No. I'm going to say, this is what I see and what I believe is the lead pastor. It's all based on scripture. And, it, and, and we need to pray in unity because if we pray the same thing, God's anointing is on unity. Anointing breaks every yoke of bondage. 
And so this praying the same thing puts us all on the same page, praying the same thing. So it's good. But again, I, 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 God gave all of us a free will to choose. I can't tell you what God's telling you. Only you know what God's telling you. I can pray with you if you're not hearing clearly and you just say, Pastor or Mike, I, I, I just need some help. I'm not, I, I, I'm not hearing clearly from God. Well, I can pray with you that you will hear more clearly. So, but, but we have these, these four platforms that God's given us again. I'm a kingdom builder prayer booklet. The final battle, America is divided. The end of age battle has begun. That's a book written before all the crazy stuff happened. Now it really confirms the book because things we said in the book are really happening. Um, Ignite the Thumb praise rallies, uh, which are just a manifestation of things we've been praying for a long time, but the rallies just started two years ago. Um, and we the county. So how does all this fit together? They're all written visions based on the Word of God and the call that God has on our church. Shining the Light in the Darkness series will explain how Life Song is connected with these different platforms so we can clearly see how to move forward in a manner uh, that all of us can have peace in our heart. I know that I know that I know all these platforms are from God. This is, our, this is written in our DNA, our spiritual DNA, I believe, before we were even created as a church. We are living epistles, walking out the Word of God. We, we live by faith. We live by faith. We don't just come in and, and, and do a message and, and, and say, okay, that's nice. No. How does it apply to us? How do we take this? How do we apply it to our culture and what's going on in the world around us? How does it affect my home, uh, my business, uh, the schools, the government, every issue, our culture, everything? How, how does this play into that, and how can we fight back? What's our platform? How are we doing it? How are we warring? Is it, is it praise rallies? Uh, is it through a prayer booklet? Uh, is it a book that kind of describes this final battle to get a bigger understanding? Uh, is, it, is it through a group that pushes back uh, against you know, the, the, the Marxist, socialist, Luciferian uh, uh, takeover? Uh, you know, so what, what's the different platform and where do you feel comfortable? What, what part of those? Are, are all four of those platforms for you? Great. Are three of them, two of them, one of them, none of them? Um, it's not like we say you, you have to do all of this to be a part. Where are you at? What's God telling you? And I'm just, you know, I'll preach my heart out saying this is what I see if, if you want to take it and run and be a part of it. Habakkuk 2, uh, 2 through 5, it says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he who runs may read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will come to pass, and it will not tarry. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So the I am a kingdom builder uh, booklet. We have them on the back table. Um, if, if you were signing up uh, to be part of uh, our membership, our family ship, however you want to call it, um, it's required that at least you look at this, go through this. You don't, have to, you don't have to pray it, but at least I want you to know what's there. I want you to read it and see what it's all about. We've always talked about being kingdom builders, and whether you're a kingdom builder or a kingdom advancer, it's the same thing. Don't try to split hairs and make a difference. Whether it's the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, same thing. Don't try to split hairs, making a difference from one to the other. So our, our prayer booklet was written in 2013, a long time ago, assembled together in 2014. Before this, we had a prayer sheet dating back to 2009, so we could all be on the same page. Um, the prayer booklet is to help us see who we are in Christ through praying and confessing the Word of God over our life on a daily basis, so we can be in unity as one voice. All the prayers are based on Scripture. So if I have one regret about this, um, I didn't give Scripture references. Every prayer is based on Scripture. I mean, those of you who know the Bible, every single prayer you can tell, oh, yeah, 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 there's like five Scriptures I see in that one prayer. Um, so the next time I, I try to get the next edition of this, I'm going to put all the Scripture references in here. So that's the one thing I regret. I don't know if I was just in a hurry and didn't want to go back and do it, or I don't know what my reasoning was, you know, eight years ago or whenever it was, but... So we, we will do that. But it's just a powerful tool, and it kind of describes the character, who we are as spiritual warriors for the Lord. So um, page 7, I'm just going to go through the book really, really quick uh, to wrap things up. Uh, page 7, it says, you know, what is a kingdom builder? Well, a kingdom builder is someone who believes God can change the world through one person. 
and therefore pray scripture daily, expecting great things to happen. Realizing all righteousness, sanctification, and holiness comes only from God's grace, and it's Jesus Christ who gives us the power to become kingdom builders and change the world around us. They are all in, sold out, on fire, refusing to back down, warriors for Jesus Christ. That should be who we are, because then we fear nothing. We are ready for whatever comes. If you know who you are in Jesus Christ and the authority that you have and who God made you, you would fear absolutely nothing. Nothing. I'm serious. Nothing. And, and that's part of my job as your pastor is to get you to realize who you are in Christ and who God made you. So this is, is confessing and professing uh, the word uh, over your life and over your family and your life ones in your community. That's what this is. That's why it's, it's a confession. It's a profession. Uh, so much of it is, you know, I believe that I am what God told me. I'm a, you're in agreement with what God said about you. That's why the title is, I am a kingdom builder. That's you. God made you that. You need to say that. You need to profess that. You are a warrior for the Lord Jesus Christ. When you say that, it releases his authority to operate in your life. That's why God said when, when Jesus would pray, he said, you have to speak to the mountain, be removed. and cast. You have to speak to the fig tree, be dried up at your roots. When we speak, there, there's, there's two things that are happening. Our words are physical and spiritual. They're in both dimensions. And when we speak, it ties the spiritual and the physical together because we release the word of God by faith into the physical realm, which is also going up into the spiritual realm. And then the angels are activated by the word of God being released and they respond to the word of God. We don't get to order angels around, but angels respond when we loosen and pray the word of God. They're activated. The Lord said, you know, he said, I'm the Lord of hosts, heaven's army. And that's like all the way through, even into the New Testament, you know, this is God's, he's like, you know, and they're with us. You know, I've given my angels to war with you. Okay. All right, so let me go. So, so there's a, a couple things in there. I don't have time to go through all of it. So Monday, so there's, there's um, a prayer. There's a daily prayer that you pray every day, the five days, uh, which is basically putting on the armor of God. It's good to put on the armor of God every day. So you pray on spiritually the armor of God every day. Uh, and then there's a specific prayer, one for Monday, one for Tuesday, for Wednesday, for Thursday, and for Friday. And there are different elements, uh, but we all should be praying together um, Monday, it says, I will pray for the world. And so uh, we're going to pray for Israel, America, persecuted church, and the body of Christ. So I just took a short cut out of the uh, prayer booklet. This isn't the whole thing because Monday, you open it up and it's, it's you know, two half pages. So Monday's a full page, Tuesday's a you know, full page. So this is just one prayer from there. It says, Father, and you can see the scripture in it right away. Father, I humble myself, pray, and I seek your face. I turn from my wicked ways and ask you to heal our land. Give us the wisdom and power to tear down everything that exalts itself against the word of God in the name of Jesus. Speak to our politicians that they fear you and honor your ways. I will stand up for godly principles, walk in love, and have courage to let my voice be heard. I'm not afraid to share my faith in the public square and schools at work and with my friends that Americans' eyes are open to the lies of the enemy and will cling to the original intent of the Constitution, that everyone will see our hope is not in our government, but in Jesus Christ. I pray godly men and women will rule in positions of authority and that they have godly wisdom and great faith. Again, we wrote this prayer back in, I don't even know when we originally wrote it, but it was definitely in 2013. And then we put it into our prayer booklet, which came out in 2014. Tuesday, I'll support Life Song's vision. Again, it's saying, I, I'm professing. I'm saying that this is who I am in Christ. I'm in agreement with God's word. And I'm going to release God's word in agreement because I'm praying that I see myself as God sees me as somebody who is sanctified, holy. Come on, this is how God sees you, faithful with his glory. That's how he sees you. You have to see yourself that way and profess it. I clearly see and run with the vision, teaching answers for life, believing the Bible is the inspired, infallible, authoritative, spoken, living word of God, effectively working in me to change my life as God's manifold wisdom is made known through me to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. In Ephesians 3.10, again, there's scripture for all this that God says, look, I'm going to take my manifold wisdom and I'm going to pour it out in you, the church, and I'm going to make it known through you to the principalities and powers. So in other words, I'm going to use my wisdom to confound the principalities in that demonic realm, but I'm going to do it through you. 
And so, you know, that's Ephesians 3.10 if you want to mark it down there. You know, then we have our God-given mandate to ignite the thumb with praise and worship. You guys know about all that. Wednesday, I have authority and I'm faithful. I cast down any words and lies spoken against me, my family, life song, and any of its members. No weapon formed against me, my family, or my church will prosper. And I, I say me first because, again, if maybe the English isn't correct, it should go the other way. It should say, you know, my church, my family, and then myself. But I'm saying it with me first because God's saying, look, I want to work through you. This is all about me and you. I want you to see who you are. I want you to realize who you are. No, no weapon formed against me, my family, or my church will po- prosper. The gates of hell will not stop me. I have the keys to the kingdom of heaven and the power to bind and loosen. This is all about authority. I have authority over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing by any means can harm me. This is confessing God's word, what he says about you, what he says to you, and you're taking it, confessing it, believing it, and releasing it back out. I am breaking into new realms of influence to reach others for Christ. Together we'll occupy those realms. Thursday, fellowship. We are family. How many times do you hear that around here? We are, because we love everybody right where they're at. Ain't nobody perfect. I love people right where they are at, making that confession. I love people right where they are at, walking in grace and mercy, trusting in the Holy Spirit to change hearts for the glory of God. What Satan has used to divide us, God will use to strengthen us. I walk in forgiveness as I want to be forgiven. Father, please forgive me for being offended because we're all going to get offended. As I cast down the spirit of offense that tries to poison and harden my heart, examine my heart, Lord, and show me any darkness. With your grace, Lord, I can forgive and I have power over sin. For Friday, it talks about now Friday, we're praying and we're getting ready for the service on Sunday. So we're going to pray before the service even happens. It's our anticipation. Lord, I believe every Sunday as I come expecting, you will manifest in my midst and signs and wonders will follow the preaching of your word. I pray when people walk in the front door, they're going to feel righteousness, peace, and joy as the kingdom of God is at hand, that the presence of God is real and tangible to everyone. Boy, I can tell people have been praying that for a long time because I hear again and again of people walking in that front door, and as soon as they hit that front door, they, they, just, they just feel good. They just feel this energy. They feel like this love. They feel like, wow, there's like an excitement here, and people are happy, and people are smiling, and this is like, wow, this is really cool, and they just sense that. You know how many times I've heard that? from somebody who first walked in this door and they come up and they tell me that or they've told other people and other people tell me that's because of prayer and it's God all glory to God but in order to release the things of God we 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 pray and come and become an agreement with God I claim souls for the kingdom of God. I believe people will receive revelation of your word. Dreams and visions will flow. Bondages will be broken. Prayers will be answered. Holy Spirit, we give you full rule and reign and ask for whatever gift is needed to build your kingdom to manifest in our lives. Now, this is all highlighted here. Oh, and isn't this cool? This is the first time you have all the notes. Most of the time, I tell you, you only have half the notes. And if you want all the notes, I'm preaching from two or three pages and you got to, you know download the planning center app or you got a or the church center app or what well i decided today i'm going to put all the notes in there so you got them and so if it's highlighted it's highlighted in the uh, our prayer booklet i will shout with a great shout to give you praise because you jesus are worthy to be praised i'll lift my hands to you god surrendering my life in humility to your grace and mercy i believe your glory god will fill our temple and that prayer at the end of service during the last song will open a gate to heaven, allowing your miracle-working power to flood down and come to, coming into our sanctuary, changing our lives. Um, this is so, we, we say this, and we, this is one of the most powerful times for God to answer prayers at the altar, um, at the end of every service. Um, we, we've done what the Lord's told us to do to, to get to this point. I mean, we, we've gotten up, we come, we've prayed for the service, we're anticipating for the service. Uh, many of us have been praying for God to flow, especially at the end. I mean, you walk in, uh, you know, we, we greet, we have hugs, we, do, we praise God, which is spiritual warfare right away uh, to break things up in that demonic realm. We give, we offer to God, we say we tr- our trust, our hope is in you, Lord. And then we hear a message that's powerful, the word of God, and it, it makes a way. It, it just like, it, it, it's, it sets the things into position, what God wants us to walk into his presence. But then at the end, now it says that obedience is better than sacrifice. 
sometimes it takes obedience to, to break through to get the blessing that God wants to give you. Sometimes our disobedience holds back a, a, a blessing because we're not, we're, we're, God says, you know, in order for him to bless you with something, you've got you to gotta deal with something. I mean, let's say you've been, you've been praying for um, uh, a, a nice truck, but um, you lust over trucks and that's all you ever think about. Uh, you've got a problem. Trucks are your idol. God's not going to give you, <laughs> help you get a truck when it's your idol. But the Lord might say, I, I want to break that bondage of idols. I want you to come to the altar where I can meet you. And up here at the altar, it's just out of, now you're just being obedient to the Holy Spirit. And out of that obedience, a lot of times it opens up our heart for the Holy Spirit to, to work in our heart because it's better than sacrifice. Obedient, listening to the Holy Spirit and doing what he tells us to do is better than sacrificing. That's better than, than you know, whether you bring money uh, or, 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 or sacrificing things for God. Um, obedience. And so all we ask is at the end of service, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and says, you need, you need to go up because I got something for you, or, or you need to go up and pray with someone because you're having a hard time and you need to break this. There's a bondage and you've been praying to break it and praying to break it and you haven't been able to break it and you haven't had breakthrough and you're almost frustrated and don't even want to pray anymore. Sometimes you got to pray with someone. Because when you pray together, there's a synergistic effect and the, and the power, authority of God is released with a greater anointing because now you have two in agreement. But sometimes we're too prideful to come up because we don't want somebody to know our junk. Okay, then you're going to carry that junk. Okay. But, okay. So with this, wrapping it up, darkness is to conceal or keep hidden. That's what darkness means. Especially the truth. Sin kept in darkness maintains its power or bondage over us. We allow darkness to stay in our heart when we refuse to deal with the sin. Being offended, which is unforgiveness, anger, lust, deceit, pride, the like, all that stuff. Shining the light on that will remove the darkness from your heart. Because the darkness has to flee when the light comes into your heart. The light comes into your heart through confessing, through admitting, and, and dealing with these things and not being in denial. And sometimes that means asking someone to pray for you or being obedient and coming up and saying, Lord, I, I, I give this to you. In, in James 5, 16 through 17, it says, confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Sometimes it, it, is, our, is our healing not manifesting because we're not dealing with those things in our heart? John, uh, 1 John 1, 7 through 9. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Fellowship in the light means transparency and honesty. Transparency and honesty. It means, hey, hey, you know, sister to sister, I, I need some help, man. Pray for me. Brother to brother. I'm, I'm being open and honest here, man. I need some help. And we don't go, oh, really? You know, it's like, no. We're probably like, yeah, I dealt with that myself. Let's pray. The, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from, from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Is he the light that's in you? Are you blocking his light from dealing with issues in your heart? He loves you so much. He doesn't want you to stay with that sin in your heart. Let's pray.